They think that if they do not live that little part of the Bible, they will not lose their salvation and God will not charge them. Since the commandment or doctrine is in the New Testament it is mandatory to follow it. We will be charged for not following what the doctrine of grace commands. New Testament verses on sexual immorality and fornication, in particular. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6 13. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 1 Corinthians 6 18-19 Run from sexual sin, no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. Ephesians 5, 3. But fornication, and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 4. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor. Matthew 15 19 For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Matthew 19 9 And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Jude 1 4 I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. 1 John 2, 3, 4. And we can be sure that we know Him if we obey His commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. I remembered that even married to my wife I could not resist a woman in sexy clothes. My heart burned with lust seeing women in skirts walking on the street. I kept looking and wishing for the sensuality of these marriage-destroying women. I have committed adultery with my eyes and betrayed my wife even without being in the physical act of fornication. I repented at that moment and asked the Lord's forgiveness and I will never look at anything sinful again. In hell, I realized what did not allow me to grow spiritually despite my praying very much. I never had the strength to overcome my flesh and the anointing of God was never poured into my life. It was because of the television I had. I watched many violent movies and in the view I had of television in hell, I saw a million blood-sucking demons like those blood-sucking leeches. They sucked my spiritual life and took my strength when watching television. These bloodthirsty demons live inside televisions. Martin Luther King in Hell. I saw Pastor Martin Luther King in Hell. This Baptist man is a Freemason. He was an activist of Freemasonry who fought for Masonic rights. What was revealed to me about his life in Hell? This man fornicated with several women and became intoxicated with sex and power. His gospel was more philosophical than Christian. He was addicted to prostitution and never advocated the cause of the gospel but he fought for the Masonic cause. The Freemasonry that he was involved with also defended the racist cause but this is to get support from the black population to take power. This Freemasonry wanted its members to come into power using the black population of the United States and to get their ideas popularized but they never cared about these people. Martin Luther King was also deceived by the same Freemason lodge that he worked for and was used by them to defend the blacks at the time. But Freemasonry itself ordered him killed so that this man did not discover that the Masons were only deceiving the black population about their rights. Most of these Freemasons congregated in the Baptist church where Martin was a pastor to watch his steps to see if he would reveal the secrets of the Masonic Brotherhood or whatever was revealed in their secret meetings. I saw a demon tormenting this man in hell and mocked him by saying, It was I who used that man to take your life. I went into him and made him shoot you to death.
Martin Luther King Jr., an American clergyman and civil rights leader, was shot at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, on April 4, 1968. King was rushed to St. Joseph's Hospital and was pronounced dead at 7.05 p.m. Principalities of False Religions in Hell I saw in hell several principalities. The greatest demons I saw in hell could take me by the hand and crush me if God permitted. I saw the principality of false Christianity being preached today. He was happy and before him, millions of souls bowed in pain and suffering. These people are all pastors, bishops, reverends, apostles, elders, evangelists, missionaries, and all peoples who live this false gospel full of lies and without renunciation. On the other side, I saw the principality of Catholicism and Catholics were forced to worship that demon in great pain. I saw the principality of Hinduism and several people suffering in pains worshipping him there. I saw the principality of Buddhism and before him, several people worshipping and suffering eternal punishments. I saw the principality of Kardecist spiritualism and Alan Kardec with multitudes of people worshipping that demon. The principality scoffed at Alan Kardec and said, I have used and inspired you to produce doctrines of deception. Thanks to you, I have gained all those souls who believe in your lies. The principality threw Alan Kardec over the multitude of souls being punished and those people began to tread on this man with much hatred. Others would bite and beat him. I saw the principality of African spiritualism which is witchcraft, it also has many souls in its power which has been won. I saw the principality of the Jehovah's Witness who also has a barn of souls just for him. These souls burned within that besieged abyss and the demons exalted themselves saying, they believed in our false teachings now they will burn forever. They should never have believed in our false teachings if they didn't want to come here. I saw the principality of Judaism tormenting a multitude of Jews in a valley. He said, you did not believe in Jesus and you rejected him and did not accept the grace to live by faith. You were still observing the law and you became a sect. The Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and lawyers were suffering in this valley. And the last principality was of Seventh-day Adventism, and before him were multitudes of souls suffering and groaning in pain. The principality laughed and said, They are fools and foolishly believed in the lies that the Apostle Paul fought so much in antiquity. How many times he said they are in grace and not in the law. So they became cursed and they all go with us to the lake of fires in the last judgment. We will not suffer alone in this lake. We blinded their minds to never believe in any other gospel other than our Adventist gospel. And that principality laughed and his laughter was sarcastic and frightening. Jesus said, I only show these principalities of the main religious currents. They have inspired and raised their leaders to spread their lies. Their leaders are the founders of these sects on earth and they were controlled by demons to serve as instruments of darkness. Plastic Surgeries I saw people suffering in hell for the sin of undergoing plastic surgery like reduction of stomach, nose, face, ears, and others introduced silicones in their bodies. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 17, If any man destroys the temple of God, God shall destroy him, for the sanctuary of God is holy, which are ye. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. I saw many people in hell for blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The demons used the false prophets in the supernatural signs and the Christians said that it was the work of the Holy Spirit thus offending his sanctity. These people went to hell for saying that false prophets are being used by the Holy Spirit to heal and prophesy. I saw people in hell for saying that televangelist Kenneth Copeland was used by the Holy Spirit to prophesy healing and blessings. Jesus revealed to me that Pastor Max Lucado is a Freemason. Jesus showed several evangelical books in hell. Jesus said, they sell my word, they market what they say is my inspiration, if they belong to me they would not sell what is mine. These books are the heritage that enabled them to accumulate their fortunes. In these books, lies were mixed with the truth to confuse my servants who like to read the word. Deliverance of cousin from witchcraft. I am going to speak about the great work that God has done in the life of my cousin Fernandez. My cousin Fernandez was a sorcerer because he was from that religion. I never approached him when I was a Jehovah's Witness. Everything he asked for the demons gave, like home, car and great job. My cousin never studied college to have a great job but by the fact that he served the demons he got all this without any professional qualification. These demons that he called them his guiding and protective spirits were all gathered in hell.
I saw them in hell plotting to reap the lives of those who seek them. My cousin had statues of these devils in his house but their appearances are of men on earth but they are already in hell and are very ugly monsters. These demons were in a meeting talking about my cousin, they were fooling him. I saw a demon say he would fill my cousin with material possessions and arrest him in these things and so kill him. These demons were planning to kill him. They gave away material things to him as good things and then they planned to take away his soul leaving behind all his money and material possessions on earth because he cannot take his wealth to hell. After I returned to earth I interceded for his life. He had a statue of an angel which he called a spirit of light. When I interceded for God to open his eyes, a black and furry monster came out of the statue and he saw and ran from his house staying a month at my house. He got into a trauma and we prayed together and he converted to Jesus. How wise of God to use this strategy to make him see the monster coming out of the statue for his awakening. He broke all the statues of his house. New birth to escape hell. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I did not believe in hell. Even after my conversion to the Christian faith, I had doubts about this place. I was a long time in the sect that did a great brainwashing in my mind. They have managed to put in my mind that hell does not exist. I had trouble believing in hell. If it were not for this rapture, I would never believe in the existence of this place. What can you say to the listeners? It is very easy to go to live in that place. Assembling in a ministry will not free your soul from that place. Being part of the church does very little to help you escape from that place. You may have the most important office of the church and that will not save your soul there either. You may be the most dedicated member of your church, it will not deliver your soul either. What will save your soul is the new birth. You have to bury this old person and reborn a totally different one. A new person must be born not of the flesh but of the spirit. A new person with a heart according to God's. A person who is turned to the things of God and is no longer attached to the world. When you detach yourself from the things of this world and begin to desire the things of heaven, it means that you have been born again. When you feel displeasure and desire to live in heaven, you are already on the right path. When you begin to feel disgusted with sin and no longer feel the desire to sin, I can say that your name is written in the book of life. If your flesh is dead to the world, nothing on earth will attract you and you are a saved person and be sure that, for it is the truth. Prophecy of Fall of a Church a ball of light enveloped me in hell and brought me to my house. I believe it was the power of God. The voice that revealed to me that the world would enter my pastor's church echoed a warning in my heart. After this rapture, I told my pastor everything. He did not believe the revelation and said that his church was firm. He said the revelation I had is for the fallen churches and does not fit with his church. He believes that this vision of the world entering the church is for another church. At that point, he is right, for my vision did not match the reality of his church at that moment. All the members were praying and sanctified. I believed that the vision was future, God was warning my pastor so that the ministry would not fall. The pastor ignored this revelation and did not warn the people. A year after this vision the church fell from the faith and everything was fulfilled just as the voice told me. The pastor was the first to fall from the faith and began using church money to buy a house and a car. He began to forbid me from preaching against sin. And I said I can only preach what God wants. He offered me money to preach his gospel. My pastor did not want his flock corrected. He noticed my serious way of behaving with the truth. I rejected his money not to preach what he wanted. After I was caught up in hell and saw the torments, I would never do such a thing as to hinder the work of God. I will not be judged innocent if I became corrupted after what I have seen in hell. I left the ministry of my pastor for being forbidden to preach what God wanted. I asked for the blessing of my pastor to leave without any grudges. He said that I betrayed him and threw a curse at me. A few months without a ministry, I walked in several churches in search of a place to congregate. All churches had their philosophical doctrines based on the theology of healing, financial blessings, and self-esteem. I could not stand these teachings and continued to visit these churches. I began to pray to God for a serious church. Jesus said, Servant, there are no serious churches in this place. You can start with a serious church in this place, take the initiative to restore the true gospel in that place. I talked to my wife and we opened a church that speaks of the truth that is denied in many ministries. 
I close my testimony and may Jesus enlighten every life that hears me. Amen. The former Jehovah.